Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another of the Outrageous Hope podcast. I'm really excited today, guys, um, for a number of reasons, but mostly because I have my dear friend, Mr. Josiah Trigg, with me today. I'm so pumped. Say hello to everybody, Josiah. Hello, hello, hello. Yay. Um, I'm trialing the video recording as well. And so you can find this recording also on my YouTube channel at Rages Hope, Mandy Woodhouse at Rages Hope on YouTube. But I'm also excited because Christmas is coming up. I'm excited about the topic of conversation today. I'm just excited. Just excited, Josiah. I'm just excited. <laughs> so good. Me too. <laughs> Awesome. Hey, before I go any further, I have a shout out to Alan Davis this week. I got an email from Alan this morning saying he's keeping up with the podcast and he's enjoying it. And Alan, you're amazing. You've been a huge blessing to me in a number of ways. So I just want to say hello and God bless you and that your Christmas mm. would be just um, the best ever that this would be the best Christmas you've ever had. So, hey, on the, on the today, the date that we're recording, this podcast will you who are listening to this, um, if you're listening to it and it's fresh, it'll be coming out on Tuesday the 27th. That'll be the day you're listening. Uh, for those of you who are following the podcast weekly, I've got a few of you. I love you guys so much. Thank you for your encouragement. Uh, just just a a little um, announcement, I guess. I'm going to take the first week of January off. And so my next podcast won't be out until the, the 10th of January. So we're just going to, yeah, take some time. So I hope you enjoy your Christmas. I hope you enjoy your New Year's and that you, um, yeah, begin to just dream with the Lord of everything that 2023 can be for you. So, mm -hmm. hey, Josiah, do you want to do the thorn bud rose? Do you want to go first? Yeah, I'm happy to. Sure. Okay. Before you go, um, before you go, before you go, um, I wanted to just let people know um, Josiah is amazing. I We <laughs> love him and his wife, Rachel, to bits. And for those of you that have never heard Josiah before, uh, you're going to be so blessed in this episode. I've known Josiah for what, going on four years? Uh, yeah, going on four. Uh, about, yeah. yeah, going on four years. Um, and in the past year, uh, our friendship has gotten quite deep, which is amazing. And so I, I can say, I think I know you pretty well. Uh, and I'm pretty certain that you guys are going to be so blessed by him. He is an emerging voice on this earth. And mm -hmm. he has some very, uh, just the depth of wisdom and the depth of gold that comes forth from his mouth, from his heart, and from his time with the Lord. Because Josiah is a teacher with a prophetic flavor and he's <laughs> <laughs> he's also just a friend of God and a man of great honor and humility. So I have to say that before we continue so that people know that that wow. that's what they're going to hear today. So but <laughs> oh, let's wow. Thank you. let's just get silly for a second. So tell me thorn Rose, bud bud thorn. Okay, uh, I'll start <laughs> with the thorn. Um yeah, I'm in a bit of a space at the moment, a season of rest. And the past four years, I've been charging pretty hard. So the challenge at the moment is to rest <laughs> yeah. um, and, and actually enjoy that space um, rather than jumping in uh, and doing a whole bunch of things. So that's a bit of a challenge at the moment. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the rose. So the good thing is that I am able to rest <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I'm getting the space to rest. Um, and I guess the second part of the rose into the bud is that, um, yeah, it's Christmas this coming weekend and I get to spend a bunch of time with my family on both sides, my wife's family and my family. And yeah, I'm just really excited for that. Um, uh, we get to spend, uh, yeah, part of Christmas day with, 
with part of a part, part of my family that we haven't been able to spend Christmas with for nearly a decade. And so that's going to be a really special time. So I'm really excited for that as well. Yay. Yeah. That's so me. Good. <laughs> so good. Yes. Um, my thorn, because I mm-hmm. like to start with the thorn as well. Um, my thorn, I think, is that we um are going to be driving to Sydney. That's not the thorn, but we're going to Sydney for Christmas. But I don't get to have my puppies with me. And oh. I know that sounds silly, but I love them so much. And so they they will be at home in really good hands, but I am going to miss them. So I had mm. that moment this morning. I was like, oh, I'm going to miss them. Um, <laughs> They'll miss you too, I can imagine. <laughs> yes, you know yeah. them. Um. <laughs> I think my rose, my rose is that Kasten and I celebrated 16 years anniversary. Yes, you did. Yay, <laughs> yesterday. And then uh, we're going to celebrate some more this afternoon this afternoon and tonight. So 16 mm. years. Oh, That's my gosh. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. It's been amazing. It has been amazing. Oh. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. So, mm. so special. Beautiful. <gasps> and my bud is ah yes my bud is this the same this week that it was last week and that is that there is a new course coming up in March and April which Josiah is gonna be part of and it's Woo. called Yielded and for those of you that did the battle ready boot camp in the past it is similar but way more in depth and. I'm I'm excited. We're going to start announcing speakers soon, but I've got um, myself, Kasten, Josiah Trigg, my friend Matt Beckenham, my friend Bo- Brooks Seabright from the States. Uh, um, our friend Jesse Cheeseman will be joining us. And oh, then my sister, I know Jesse's amazing, <laughs> and my sister Jess Woodhouse also. So I'm awesome. very, very excited. And that starts the 20th of March if you're interested send through an expression of interest outrageous hope girl at gmail.com now i want to give josiah time to talk but i just felt the holy spirit say to just share um my favorite memories so <laughs> my first memory of josiah so how we met was through the glory city academy josiah was a student it was his first year and costin was coming in as a leader and I came in as a leader the next year. But my very first memory of you ever was during a worship session. Um, mm-hmm. You were wearing that poncho and you <laughs> had your hair pulled back in, in your man bun mm-hmm. thing. And you're, you're, I think your face was a bit bushier than it is now. Oh, well, and surely would have been. And I glanced over at you and you were weeping in the presence of God. And then I watched you for a while. That sounds so creepy. That sounds, I'm sorry, that sounds creepy, but I watched you for a while. I'm like, who is this guy? Um, because I saw, I saw your love and your passion for the Lord. This would have probably been um late July, early August of 2019. And mm. um, I know you well now, so I know kind of what you were walking through at that stage, but your heart was so raw before the Lord. And I said to Costin after, I was like, who is this Josiah guy? And he was like, oh yeah, he's amazing. Like amazing. Little would we, <laughs> we know that years later, we would be really close to you guys. So mm. that was my first wow. memory of you. Um, my favorite memory, and we've got lots of memories these days, but my favorite mm. memory of you, I would say, is at our dining table last night. Mm. We were crying together, talking about the second coming of Christ. Oh, beautiful. And the four of us were in tears and angels filled the room. And we could mm. all just, that that's one of my favorite memories. And so... It was special. It was very special. For so, sure, yeah. Oh Powerful too. Gosh. Um, speaking of your story, one of the mm-hmm. things that um I really wanted to invite you to come and chat about. Um, we're gonna be talking today, guys, about suffering and and 
the fact, you know, Jesse Cheeseman, who's a mutual friend of, of ours, dropped this line in my podcast a few weeks ago, really quickly. He said, he talked about suffering and he talked about how it was actually a promise of the Lord and that a lot of people in our stream and, and in today's uh, world in church tend to, let's just push it off to the side. Let's ignore it. We're not going to talk about suffering. And and they take scripture out of context and only look at the part where Jesus is going to, to come and do all the good stuff without teaching people mm -hmm. that suffering is actually part of the Christian walk. And mm -hmm. I know that the Lord has given you, Josiah, a really powerful revelation on that. And, and Josiah also has a heart to see people properly discipled and walking in their faith, which is one of the reasons why I've got him on uh, the yielded in the, in the yielded course. So I'm just going to give it to you and let you just go ahead and talk. Tell us your story. Tell us, you know, the things that are on your heart regarding that. Totally. Yeah. Wow. So I guess to uh, yeah, keep it concise, I got to this place. Uh, went through some difficulty um, and some dis like real disappointments um, in kind of May last year, 2021. And um, they were just kind of the things, like they weren't the most intense things I've gone through in my life. They weren't anything. They were just circumstances that caused me to ask some questions mm -hmm. um, and uh, about what I was believing about God, about what I was believing about the Christian life. Um, what I was believing about, what it meant to be a disciple of Christ. Um, and I started, re I just started seeing some inconsistencies between what I was experiencing and um, and what I was believing. And yeah, I guess some of the language that I would put to it now is that I um, was kind of believing a bit of a, just like this this triumphalistic kind of, uh expression of christianity where mm -hmm. everything was about was about our blessing everything was about mm -hmm. um our personal victories that we have in christ which are real and we do yes. have yes um absolutely i've experienced that in my own life so i can't let go of that yeah. <laughs> and um and it was just it was just like this focus on on if if it's bad we don't look at it if it's yeah. if it's um, suffering, even just in the world, like people outside of Christianity suffer as well. They they go through things that that are really tough and 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 all of that. But but my worldview would would um, it would push away trial. It would push away challenge. It would push away um, the fire that can come in life. You know, the, the, the things that can refine us. And and yes. and yeah, and so. I just went on this journey. Um, I started, I started uh, just pouring through scripture, um, starting to see that that kind of worldview of um, that I had was, was uh, quite an imbalanced view of scripture. Mm. Um, and when you have that worldview, it leads you to quite a lot of disappointment <laughs> yeah. when you when you go through things that aren't um, pleasant um, because we do go through things that aren't pleasant and um, yes. so what I started doing in the midst of that a couple months in the Lord led me to start reading um, the lives of martyrs the lives of people in the persecuted church right throughout church history mm -hmm. um, I read Fox's book of martyrs highly recommend it if you um, yeah desire to to yeah it's just a recommendation i would highly recommend it yes. it changed my life um i i subscribed to and signed up to start hearing stories from um, an organization called open doors and voice yeah. of the martyrs and just these different organizations today that are that are serving um the church in different parts of the world that are um experiencing persecution and what i started realizing was i was actually like getting starting to get really confronted as I started to read these stories right throughout church history and, and stories of people today where it was almost like the worldview that I had that I just talked about it was like a, a form of it was like it was just totally different to the faith that these people over here believed yeah. there was like some really deep differences that it almost started to feel like they were different um 
religions all together. Yeah, <laughs> and wow. that was really confronting. Um, and so that caused me to go deeper in prayer, deeper into the word. And yeah, I, I started um, seeing things in the word that I I hadn't seen before. Um, I was veiled to almost because of this 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 worldview that I had. And mm-hmm. to, to put it really simply, <laughs> how I've explained this before is when Jesus says in John 16, 33, that uh, in this world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Yeah. My worldview would remove tribulation. It would remove yes. the need for me to have courage. Me too. Um, and it would say that like, I'm the one that's overcome the world. Mm. I'm the one that gets to ex- like have all these massive victories. But in that verse, it's talking about Jesus. It's yeah. talking about the fact that we can have victory in him. Absolutely. But he's not promising that it's going to be an existence that we have here and now that is going to be free of trial, free of persecutions, free of sufferings. Um, well, that's the and, thing though. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but um, like, victory is not the same as not having a trial or tribulation like like there is victory in suffering absolutely it's very different and people talk about victory in christ yes we have victory in christ but uh, they're two it's two separate things there's victory Mm -hmm. in christ but but you you tap into that and you tap into more of his nature in the process of suffering Fully, yeah, and one of the one of the um, I would say scriptures that I've heard taken out of context, and that um, I would believe out of context as well, is when it says in Romans eight that like you are more than conquerors in Christ. Yeah, and the actual um, context of that, the whole paragraphs before that, it's talking about suffering. It's talking about the fact that we we are like we are conquering because there is something to conquer yeah. because there is, there is a victory that we have over something yes. and, and to negate what that something is, then it, it kind of actually um, removes the power of the victory. It removes the fact that we are conquering something. Yeah. And so, yeah, my whole worldview in that space totally got rocked and, and, and changed and, um, now I can understand verses like be joyful in trials or we get to partake in the sufferings of Christ and these different scriptures that talk about these things actually make sense now because now I'm not just expecting this um, seamless, pleasant life of filled with all this blessing. It's like a utopia yeah. um, that just isn't in scripture. Yeah. Um, so that's that's that was a bit of my journey and there's some little scripture nuggets in there too. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so good. One of the things I know that you're passionate about, you and I have had so many conversations about this, particularly this past year, the the idea yeah. of the cost of discipleship and the fact that, um, you know, I, I believe that if people are being discipled properly, that they can stand in the midst of shaking stand in the midst of suffering stand in the midst of lack in the midst of fear in the midst of all of those things because jesus is their lord they know that there's just something about like i said earlier tapping into a different part of him you know stephen's being stoned and he looks up to heaven and like he can see angels and everyone can see his face glowing and there's a love and a grace and a there's something that you tap into and i feel like the church not to sound critical but the church just hasn't done a good job and i'm talking about globally at discipling people so that they can stand in the midst of persecution so that people yeah. actually find it an honor to be martyred you know and, and the hope in that and um i'm I'd love for you to talk into that, speak into that a little bit. Totally. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I I fully agree with your observations there, Mandy. Um, Something I've realized is that we, um, and yeah, me too. I don't want to come off as critical here, but we can, we can very much so preach a gospel of the here and now Mm. and 
that's only part of like what we like what we get to experience in Christ now when we come and we're saved and we we believe under him and he becomes our lord like that's that's that is a really real reality that we get to experience mm. here and now but mm. but the other part of the gospel is that we're we're seeking and pursuing to be united with him in eternity as well yes that we have like a real hope of like oh i get to be with the lord one day <laughs> you know it's it's what paul talks about and like um when he he reveals his grievance of like oh i want to just be with the lord but i'd rather be present with you so that i can you know um i can't remember the full quote right now but it's this this idea that like we 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 we're, we're pursuing and 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 wanting to yeah spend eternity with him and and so when uh, one consistent thing that i i found when i was reading the lives of these martyrs is that they would happily go and partake in those sufferings because they knew that it was something that would unite them to Christ yes in that eternal sense and the thing that would anchor them through that entire place is a hope in that is a yeah. hope in knowing that like oh, i get to be united to jesus like yeah. these present troubles these present trials though i might be inflicted in my body like all these intense things um I get to be with Jesus in eternity and I don't want to compromise that now. And I, I will, I will pursue that and I will go after that. And I mean, Peter chapter three, it talks uh, first Peter chapter three, it talks about um, being zealous for good, being zealous for righteousness. And even if it, if it brings a persecution upon us, we, <laughs> we do it for him, you know, and yeah. there's something within that, um, within the understanding and our confession that he is Lord is that we live for him. <laughs> We're his disciples. We follow him. And so whatever that looks like, that will, like Jesus didn't promise that that would be that every single person would be our friend. When we make that journey, yeah. he, he does actually say that, that, that we will be hated as he is hated and all these different things that there, and that's intense, but there is a reality of like, no, if I if I walk with Christ, um, that that I, I I will experience hardship, I will experience suffering, I will experience uh, different things that aren't pleasant. Um, yeah. But my comfort, my assurance, my hope is set in a in a King that has the victory. It's set in uh, that's why we can be more than conquerors because of Him, because of His sacrifice and what He's done for us. And the fact that it's not just a here and now moment, it's like, no, like we're pursuing to obtain something within eternity. Yeah. That's really exciting. That's where our living hope is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in a, in, in a man that is alive and present with us here and now and within eternity. And it, it, that hope I've found is it, it produces a lot of confidence in your heart and it's like this this consistent theme that i've seen through the lives of all these people that have endured for christ yeah. and to the to the point of death and it's it's really profound and uh, in in the west we're quite divorced from that concept of yeah. persecution and yeah. i think we've got a lot to learn from from these stories and from these people and right right from the genesis of the church um we've got a lot we can learn and a lot we can be inspired by yeah. Um, especially in our day and age, especially with, um, yeah, where, where things are going. Yeah. Just, I, I know that, I know that people are hearing you. I can feel the weight. I can feel the presence yeah. of God. I know that people are hearing you, but I also know that, um, I can hear in the spirit that people are asking the question like, okay, yes, I get it. Yes. I understand, but I don't fully understand how do I get there? How do I get to a place where, um, mm. where I, I fully understand that what you're saying, you know, do you have any tips? Do you have anything that people can do? Can you equip people unpack yeah. it a little bit more on, on how they can get to that place? Practical things. Yeah, totally. I, it, everything comes back to our relationship with him. Yeah. Everything. When we see him clearly, we start to realize how worth it he is 
yeah. for standing in his truth yes. and standing in what he has asked us to fight for, yeah. standing in righteousness, standing in the truth. Um, and there's something about that that is really profound. Um, and so my my encouragement will be don't, don't um, let go of him. <laughs> yeah. this is, he he confesses us before the father when we confess him before man and when we don't change the topic of who he is yeah when we when when, when that flows out of our places like we actually get to know him yeah um when it flows out of that place it creates this almost like this habitation of just like living for him no matter what no matter what um harm or suffering comes our way because we've actually got something to hold on to it's like that anchor that hebrews talks about an anchor for yeah. our faith and that's yeah. christ himself and so yeah even even for those who might be experiencing stuff right now as we're talking like like hold on to him like we do have a victory in him we can experience breakthrough in him we can be conquerors in him yeah um but even like like psalm 23 says that he leads us through the valley. Yes. He doesn't deny the valley. He doesn't cause the valley to go away. He leads us through the valley. And that's a really comforting thing when you're going through a valley. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's my encouragement. Like hold on to him. He leads you through it um, no matter how intense it is. So beautiful. I know that we don't have a lot of time left. Um, mm. So a couple of things I was going to say. Um you know, any closing thoughts you have. Also, how can people contact you? And I know you've got a new website up and running and you've got other <laughs> projects that you're working on. Um, so let us know how people can get in touch with you and yeah. also um, any closing thoughts. And then at the end of those two questions, if you could pray for everybody. Yeah, I'd love to. Absolutely. Yeah, so you can find me um, at josiahtrigg.com. There's a contact form if you want to ask me questions, all that kind of stuff. Would love to hear from you. Um, I'm also, I've also just started up a little uh, project called Ancient Stones, which is basically, I just want to reclaim the voice of all these people, all these Christians that have gone before us, right from the early church, right through these people that have um, been really significant in the life of the church and the advancement of the kingdom. And yeah. uh, so I just quote, I just quote them and share some commentary on that and so yeah you can find me on instagram or facebook with that uh, it's called ancient stones um yeah and and an encouragement would just be just to echo what i just said before uh, don't let go of jesus like he's a real anchor i've found myself when i've been in times of trial and suffering even just the past year as, as I've, I've come into deeper revelation of these things is like I, I find myself holding an anchor in my heart and that is him in the midst of that, even if the winds and the waves are crashing around me, I hold on to him and he is always there. He never forsakes the righteous, the Bible says. So, so don't let go. That would be my encouragement. So good. Um, is that good? That's great. Um, I was going to say too um, that, sorry, my little Zoom thing popped up. I was going to say too, guys, that like um, Josiah is not afraid of hard questions. I think he actually thrives sometimes on the hard <laughs> questions and he is um, quite thoughtful and prayerful in his responses. And I I know that he's like really seeks the Lord and things. So if you have questions mm. or if you have like, man, my worldview has always been this. And, and I feel so challenged by what you just said, please reach out to him. Please do. Um, I know that he would love to hear from you and he would love Absolutely. to even um he's not going to debate you because that's foolish but he will chat with you about am i right Josiah? Absolutely. like yeah um, and he's actually he won an award this year for having the class that had the most <laughs> what was it most interesting hard uh topics <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. just, <laughs> he's just graced for that so please do please do look him up and please do ask questions so hey would you mm. be willing to close us in prayer and i'm going to have you back to talk more because awesome. like 30 minutes is not enough and if you want to hear more from josiah as well the yielded course is um free 
and he will be teaching and you can get like a full hour of him. And <laughs> I think he's probably going to cover some of this stuff as well in that time. So please, please reach out if you're interested in being part of the Yielded course on Facebook, um, a private Facebook group unless I switch to a different platform, reach out, let us know, but um, mm. would love for you to pray for us. Uh, I'd love to. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for every every ear that is listening and has listened to this 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 discussion, God. And I just, yes. I pray that their hearts may be encouraged and that their hearts would, would experience the fullness of who you are, Lord. That God, that we don't need to fear these kinds of topics, Lord, that that they are topics that we need to talk about, but I thank you that we're tethered to you in the midst of it, God. And so I just pray for every listener, Lord, that they would experience that tethering to you, that union with you, Lord, that that they wouldn't feel distant from you or any realm of separation in the midst of experiencing hard things. So God, would you would you lead us? Would you guide us? And would you, yeah, move us into all truth as you promise you would teach us? <laughs> so God, thank you for who you are. We love you. Amen. Amen. And I just want to close on this. Um, I love John 16, 33. Mm. And we do have, um, we will have tribulation, but Jesus has overcome the world. Yeah. And so there's, we've got to, got to go back to that part as well. We have both of them and we hold them both close to our heart. There is trial, there is tribulation, but Jesus has overcome the world um so praise god josiah mm. thank you so much i feel like that went by entirely too fast um <laughs> so i will have to have you back again but thank Bring you thank you thank you and you're welcome merry christmas everybody oh yes hope you guys have had a wonderful well by the time you listen to this, Christmas will already have passed. So yeah. some of you may still be celebrating Christmas. Just, yeah, we just um, celebrate the birth of our Savior. We celebrate mm -hmm. the birth of our Lord. Ah, oh, and I'm excited about 2023. So thank you so much for joining us. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>